So I've said it before and I'll say it again that one of my favorite things about music is the communal nature, being able to share an experience with somebody, whether that's listening to music, listening to a new album together for the first time, or creating and writing your own music together. That's the best part of it for me. As much as I love creating in a studio space like this, it's even better when it's filled with people and you're burning the midnight oil creating something together. So today I'm going up to hang out with my buddy Zach Moore, who's a touring and session drummer for Vertical Worship. He also produces music and is a well-rounded musician with a ton of killer insight. So we're going to get a look kind of behind the curtain at his creative process, what he uses, the gear, all of that good stuff. And none of this will be possible without today's video's sponsor, and that is DistroKid. DistroKid allows you to distribute your music anywhere that you would listen to music. We're talking about Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Pandora, TikTok, all of those places, and even more. And the great thing about DistroKid is it's only $19.99 a year. That's less than 20 bucks for a full year. We're talking like maybe $1.80 per month or something like that. And the best part, as opposed to typical distribution models, is that they do not take a percentage. That's a really big deal. If I learned anything in my music business classes in college, it's that you do not want to be splitting the pie with a ton of other people. So if you're interested, they have tons of options, whether you're a single independent artist or maybe you have a couple of projects or even if you're a small label, they have tons of different options and tiers for you to choose from. Everything's super easy to use. I have my own account. I have tons of friends that use DistroKid and there's no one else that I'd be recommending. So check them out at the link below. That'll save you another 7%. Thanks, DistroKid, if you use the link down below. And without further ado, I've got to hurry up and pack up and get to Chicago. And remember, the best thing about music is being able to share it. So if you're interested in that, definitely sign up for DistroKid down below. All right, I've got to pack, throw on a jacket. It's going to be negative four in Chicago. And oh boy, I'm going to have to mentally prepare myself for it. So this is Zach. What's up? Hi, Zach. How's it so going? Take us through the space, because this is obviously not like traditional studio sure. divider rooms. Like there's live guitar amps, live drums that are not set up at the moment, but will be. Um, keys, all this stuff. So like kind of what's like the vision, kind of the ethos of the space? Yeah, so um, we basically kind of built this out for um, the band Vertical Worship. Uh, last year and we basically were like, you know what, we want we want to create like a live room and we want to be able to have like a space where we can not only like kind of start cranking out some demos but also actually be able to track like all together live because we were just kind of doing stuff remote and just putting it together. So now what we're able to do is we come in here most Wednesdays from like 9 to 12 and if we have like a demo, 
um, that we're like feeling good about, we'll just come in here and basically arrange all the parts for it together. So we'll, we'll kind of start to work through the song. Drums are over there. Normally we got the key station right there, obviously. And then generally bass and guitar is just kind of right over here. Um, and so, yeah, we'll just kind of start to work through, you know, just parts and anything, start to feel it out. And once we kind of get everything printed, once we're, start, once we're feeling like good about everything, we'll print it in to Pro Tools. And then I generally will just kind of go in and edit stuff. So we'll go in and edit drums. We'll go in and just kind of like align everything. And then we have like a nice, you know, just like a decent template to kind of get everything sounding like, you know, ballpark kind of how I want it to. Cool. And then we just kind of go from there. So that's kind of like how things roll just kind of on Wednesday. So, yeah. Yeah. So I, I'd love to know, like, so the key station. So, like, we've got a nice Rhodes over here. Yeah. There's a Whirly. We've got a Nord. We've got an actual organ, yes. a Juno. So yeah. how do you, like, patch all this in? Is it just like you have the cables run there? Um, you know, um, we have our, our, our kind of like Pro Tools and engineering techs. His name is Robert Titian. He works through a lot of like the actual patching and stuff. Cool. But this is all, this is like Kyle, our, our, our keys player in MD. His name is Kyle Smith. And so this is his Juno. Again, this is his organ. Sweet Wurlitzer. I think he found around the church years ago. Wow. And then, like, obviously, like, this real roads, and then, you know, you just can't go wrong with the Nord, the Nord Stage 3, and so. And he's got a Pro Tools rig set up over here as yeah, well, so. so. The, yeah, the great thing is we got a monitor right there, so that way he can actually take the keyboard and mouse right over there. Love and it. And we also have one over here at Drums, so that way I can also run stuff as well, so. Right. It's really yeah. great. It works super well to kind of, like, you know, workflow-wise to actually not have to be at the desk and actually yeah. be able to kind of move around some different places but with the patching stuff i'm not exactly sure i know sometimes we'll bring our loops rig in here yeah yeah and so yeah, he'll yeah. like run you see you the know, little snake and yeah he'll yeah. run like uh you know just like some ableton stuff and maybe just put like a valhalla shimmer on like a you know keyscape patch or something like that yes shout out valhalla for having like yeah. the best reverbs thank you in the game you help us all seriously. yeah yeah so uh really quick so patch bay you've actually got a fairly simple rig we've got yeah. four apollos the x8ps and then everything, so are those just for this room? Is that also for like live capture from other venues or what's the, what's that's, the rig? Yeah, that's just this room. Love it. And then for like, you know, playback, we're just using these Avioms, the Avion 360s. We love these things. I, I personally, these are my favorite just because, you know, you got the, you got bass treble for each individual channel. You got reverb for each individual channel. It is fantastic. And there's also technically 32 channels instead of 16 because all of them can oh, be stereo, right, right. which is really, really great. So I love that. You know, like you kind of got these little, you know, enhanced knob just kind of brings up yeah. know, the high frequencies, you know, just, but right. yeah, it's a, it's a great, it's a great thing. And so, yeah, obviously we're running all that through these, uh, these Avion units right here. And so Perfect. it's great. And you've it, got like a nice, like lounge space over there. So like nice little coffee bar, some couches all of that too so it's like yeah do you have a lot of like writing it's, sessions in this room that kind of just start over here um not really much actually you know if they do like writing breakouts they'll generally have a team that comes in here cool um but they'll just kind of do it just kind of like there's a couple other writing rooms in the church you know something that actually is cool as well is like let's say some people want to just come in and hang so we actually have this this uh pre-sonus headphone amp right here cool. so you can actually plug in headphones and listen to what the band's actually doing mm. and just sit and chill which Love is that. which is a cool little yeah you know thing to do if you just want to come in and hang so yeah all right so this is where the drum setup is and it actually kind of works because the drums aren't here so we can see know, everything right? that's sort of happening with mics and that kind of stuff so take me yeah. through like mics overhead we've got a nice like baffle up here and we've got really high ceilings in this room i mean yeah, they're probably great. 20 feet something like room. that oh yeah it's sweet yeah. so You've got a great like room for as far as having the physical space, yeah. but take me through like Mike's setup, kind of what your go tos are, yeah. and maybe a couple of like secrets or like kind of different things that you found that like also work well as like alternative mics. Yeah, yeah, totally. That. Yeah. So this is this is actually like the mics that I have bought over the years, and so we just kind of brought them in here because we, you know, we just had them. So yeah. Um, I was a couple years ago. I was like maybe four or five years ago, I was like, you know, I really want to start putting together like a mic locker so that way I can actually start recording stuff. Mm. So I think I bought this D6 first. Love the Audix D6. It's amazing. You know, you can't go wrong with the 57. I think that was the next thing I bought. Yeah. Um, I went and bought the Audix Tom mics, the D2 and the D4, and yeah. I used those for a little while. And then I upgraded to these Sennheiser 421s, and those oh, are yeah. the bomb. I Classics. love those so much. You can't um, beat 421s. Yeah, they're so great. So I have those on the Toms. I love those. Um, and then I got this SM7B, which is a great Swiss Army mic. 
It's um, just it's it's amazing. So I have it on the snare. I know a lot of people use that on the hi hat as well sometimes, yeah. um, and also just like a you know kit mic as well. Right. And then I have these eighty ones actually. A friend years ago gave me gave these to me, and wow. um, yeah, it's really really great. He gave me this pair. Um, so and these eighty ones are awesome. Um, I like them a lot. Um, and then we also have this slate. Mike? Oh, the modeling mic. Yes, and uh, it is awesome. It's amazing. I think it's like a hundred bucks. So like. Really? Yeah, it's it's outstanding. Um, maybe one hundred fifty bucks. It's not. I don't think. That's. It's I thought they were way more expensive yeah, than that. That one is is not super expensive, but it's it's a modeling microphone. It's it's outstanding. Wow. So uh, we use that just a hi hat. Um, we want to start getting some room mics in here, um, mm. and then even maybe like a over the kick mic just to kind of compress and really dirty up and yeah. just kind of get something to color. Yeah. sound with and so yeah this is kind of what we use you know i love like the eventually i'd love to get like some 414s for the overheads or something mm. like that um but honestly everything else though like you know maybe i need to get a i, I think i'd like to get a, a kick in mic mm. kind of lay in the kick drum so yeah. but honestly though this gets a great sound like i love it it's awesome um so yeah this is kind of like the setup and you know drummers if you're listening to this um i think like one of the big tips i would have for miking is the kick drum mic, just make sure it's aimed at the beater. That way you're just getting like the most amount of attack. Um, and then with the snare mic, um, just make sure that like your mics are aligned with the snares coming this way. Mm. So it's very important. So Good tip. Way, yeah, so just make sure you're doing out the snare mic. That'll like enhance your snare sound a ton. And then obviously in post stuff, just make sure all your phasing is right. Because if you don't get that right, you're going to lose a ton of mids and it's going to make your drum sound super week so fix it in pre not in post yeah yeah excuse me in pre yeah 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 yeah. yeah. but you can fix it fix it in post but fix it in pre but fix it in pre. this is the workstation yeah so you've got the output desk yes love this thing it's super great. heavy dude they're always like bigger in person than i think they actually I, are i can't wait to one day get one of these for my own. yeah it's a great desk yeah so looks like dyne audio monitors yep the b5a's i think okay i think it's there yeah they're great yeah, it's love awesome. them, love them. So you've got, uh, is that a Pro Tools, like a shortcut keyboard down yeah, there? Yeah, we actually then... haven't really used this much. I would like to start to use it, but we kind of got it years ago and it's just kind of collecting dust right now. Yeah. But we probably should eventually use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're using Pro Tools for yep. everything. Yep. So kind of take us through like a little bit of your workflow. Yeah. So like a little bit of like, you know, uh, uh, like you've got a new song that y'all are kind of demo and you've got a rough idea. Right. Y'all come into this space and you just start kind of throwing out ideas. Like what's a little bit of your workflow? Um, and let's talk from there. And then I want to talk to you about your drum production because yeah. that's kind of totally. for sure your back. Totally. So. Yeah, for sure. So like we have this template and so we basically just like track everything in. We have all the plugins disabled. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we'll, um, yes, yeah, so we got all the plugins disabled. We'll track everything in. And it's basically kind of like, all right, we kind of grid align everything and then just turn everything on. And it just kind of does mm. work for us, which is great. Yeah. So we kind of got everything in these folders. Like I love that Pro Tools has the folder option now. And then you mm. can actually put in effects on it. And it's basically just one like, you know, instrument bus, you know, right, right. Um, which I love. And so, so yeah, we just got drums, perk, bass, electric, keys, and tracks. And that's kind of like our thing. So then we're going, all that into an overall okay. bus, yep. and the overall is going into a mix bus, yeah. and then our mix bus is going into like the master. Great, cool. So, a little bit tech nerdy, but like what some of, you know, like you're doing this, like in your rough templates, like what are some of the plugins that you like? I mean, specific like yeah. brand, this is what I like on this, this is what I like yeah. on that. Just yeah. some examples for the Yeah, humans. my, I love the wave stuff. I, I mean, yeah. it's kind of like, I like, I mean, I love the wave stuff. I love the, um, the slate, slate has great stuff. Mm. Um, like slate has some stuff I just can't live without, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, this is some I like personally in terms of like audio effects and then also just like for VSTs and stuff, like I love, I love Arturia's mini V3 for sub bass stuff. Mm. Like they have some great stuff in there. Um, and then like Keyscape, obviously, Omnisphere. Um, I've actually bought some like, maybe like Worship Essentials, Omnisphere like worship patches and they honestly are great and I use this a lot on a lot of different stuff, even like, Stuff that's like not worship, it's just kind of like inspiring and stuff. So, so yeah, those are kind of the things we'll use for that kind of stuff. Um, personally, mm. like I think like you can't go like for waves. I don't think you can go without like the SSL channel. Oh You know yeah. the seventy six uh, CLA two A, yes. um, the API five sixty B. I think is great. I love to use that on drums. Um, I mean, Trigger two by 
Slate, Steven Slate or Slate Digital, I can't remember like what it was called, but that is like I, you know, it's just like the best drum replacement plugin like in the game. So um, yeah. I love that plugin. Um, yeah, there's a ton of them. I mean, the VBC rack, the VMR virtual mix rack from Slate is awesome. Like, there's just so many great ones. So that's, those are kind of some of my like, go-tos, though. So when you're doing, because you're started as a drummer, sure. primarily a drummer, also right. do keys and production and that right. kind of thing. Like, if you're just coming up with, man, like, I'm just pushing the envelope for myself a little bit today, or I just want to come up with, like, a cool drum part. Yeah. You record something down. What's your kind of, like process for okay i really want to tighten up these yeah. drums like what's your favorite thing for like big fat snare sounds maybe kind of distorted totally. some of those kind of effects that are a little bit more out there yeah. not traditional just making it sound like a drum kit kind yeah of stuff. i've kind of like i've kind of like started to find some samples like i really have enjoyed doing the drum replacement stuff you know i think it's obviously like super important to you know be able to create your actual like drum kit to sound good yeah. you know because yeah. a lot of people will just like rely on drum samples and stuff which mm. is you know fine I guess but um but um but yeah I've kind of like thrown together like a couple like sample you know combinations that I've really started to like and they're kind of like my go-to's and stuff and so um so yeah that's kind of like something like I like to do with that kind of stuff and um like you know that sound has great drum samples yes um my favorite drum samples now if there are any drummers watching this you've got to go check out uh the company's perks p-e-r-c-s and uh, they have a, uh, I think they have a pack called Drum Essentials Volume One, and that has the best samples. Period. Of course, some stuff. It's just really, hundred percent. It's not wow. even close. Okay. Good um, to know. And again, I want that sound has some amazing stuff as well. But for worship and like, it is just, it's, it's not even close. It's amazing. So, that's stuff I really like to go to for drum replacement stuff. And, like those samples are just like awesome. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, someone brand new to production. You know, maybe they're a drummer or a guitar player or a keys yeah. player that's like, they've got some chops, but it's like, they're starting from square one. They've just opened GarageBand for the yeah, first time. Maybe totally. they're trying to like kind of get the most out of it. So aside from just like, you know, kind of the basics of how to get audio in and that kind of thing, what are some things that's like, man, when I found this, it was kind of a game changer and or these are some like free or very inexpensive accessible things that I think everybody should start out with. Again, like pretend they've got an interface, they've got a way to get audio in. What's some stuff that just like inspires you every time you use it that's not gonna yeah. break the bank or something like that? Yeah, well, if I was talking to a drummer, you know, I think that like the great thing is Logic. If you're working on Logic, you have amazing stock plugins in Logic. Yeah. Like you really, really do. And you can do some awesome stuff with just like whatever they have. So, you know, if you're willing to pull the trigger on a $200 doll like Logic, like you're gonna get some awesome plugins with that too. So if I was talking to a drummer, the first thing I would say is like, you know what, gotta catch a really clean, great take. Mm. After that, um, I think you can't like um, ignore how important it is to isolate like your drum sounds. Mm. So you can do that by like starting to use gates and stuff and you obviously want it to feel natural. And so if you have good overheads, mm. that's gonna help that feel super natural. But you wanna start to isolate the kick drum, isolate the snares once you can, isolate the toms and reduce a lot of like bleed from other stuff. Yeah, so you got eight good. mics generally over there. Right. And that's a lot to deal with. And so that's kind of one of the first things you want to do. And then after that, you can start to, you know, you know, do some EQ surgery and take out some lows or take out some highs, whatever you need to do based on what drum it is. And then after that, it's kind of start to color, use some coloring EQs and everything, and then start compress. And so that's kind of, I think, how you start. And, you know, after that, you can start to get into the whole like, you know, drum, you know, parallel crush compression mm. and parallel reverb and, you know, all this stuff. And that's when it kind of starts to really start to feel good. And then we just add a little bit of drum replacement stuff. That's when it starts to get it out in. So those would be some kind of things that I would say are like important as like a beginner. You do drum production, that kind of thing, but you also do just a ton of production work, keys, yeah. all, all the things. Yeah. So when you're in kind of that mode, so you're not like engineering or going back and like working on drum samples, like you just right. open up a you know, your doll to yeah. write, that kind of thing. What's kind of some of your go-to stuff? Do you have a workflow that you like? Do you go for sounds? Do you go for, man, I have a melody? Is it a mix of both? Kind yeah, of what's totally. that look like? You know, um, I've like started to, I don't have it here in this computer, but I've started to, you know, like, I think, I think you have to be, as a producer, I think you kind of got to be diligent to find new sounds. Um, mm. And I think when you find one though, I think it's really important to start to like, like take your notes in your computer and start to just like put all that stuff in. Like you need to like 
keep a log of like stuff that's inspiring to you and yeah. something you can kind of go back to um, because it'll just get lost and you just won't be able to remember it and everything. And so, so I love just kind of keeping something like that. If I find a sound that's inspiring to me, I'm just like, I'm using it and then I'm also putting it in that note so that way I can go back and yeah. use it. Something yeah. that is probably one of my main inspiration like avenues is um, Splice. I yes. love Splice, and so if you shout know, out to Splice. Yeah, if you don't know what Splice is, it's a uh, drum or it's not drum. It's a it's a sample company, and basically you can sign up for like eight bucks a month, and you get a hundred credits, and each sample is one credit, and so you're you're gonna you're gonna be fine. Like yeah, it's it's um and that is amazing because they have amazing samples from you know vocal samples to drum samples to guitar stuff. I mean yeah. it's like incredible. So a lot of that stuff is great because you can just manipulate it and cut it and do whatever you want with it and really create some awesome stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. And so Splice is incredible. It's probably, it's probably honestly my main source of inspiration. Because like if I'm starting a song, I'm just kind of like, I don't know what to do. There's like a cool sound with Splice. That, will, like, that, that can trigger like honestly like a ton of ideas. Yes, so, totally. So I'd probably say Splice is a great place for me to start in order generally. Agreed, so, yeah. yeah. Totally same. So like you've got something in Splice. Like are there... Like specific things, I know that you've mentioned a few different, you know, things from Arturia um, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Keyscape. Like, what what are some of your like go to like just plugins in general? Companies that you really like for like soft synths, yeah. pianos, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I um, uh, you know, um, uh, Spitfire has some great free stuff. Their labs, yes. um, stuff is amazing. They have a soft piano in their labs that is so yes. incredible and it's free and it's like way so good. too good sounding to be free yes um so they have some great stuff um you know um you know there's, you know keyscape is really expensive but it's awesome um and i love their uprights and i also love their grands too um something that's really inspiring to me is just kind of like take their grand piano and then just take like a high cut and just like take off all the highs and it just feels so like underwater and like dark and yes. deep and i love that it's super yes. poppy and inspiring to me so I love doing that kind of stuff. I mean, even that kind of thing and just playing like blocked boards will really just like light a fire of inspiration. And so mm. that stuff is great. Again, I love that. I really do love the Arturia Mini V3 for sub bass stuff. Like it's super sick. Yeah. Um, and I also, I, I like to do like a little more pop stuff. And so um, if you get like the, the Slate All Access Pass, you'll get a plugin called Anna 2. And I, they have amazing sounds in mm. Anna 2. Um, so if you're doing that, if you're getting that all access pass, like you got to take advantage of that cause it's a great plugin. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, I'm sure there's another one that I'm like missing one more that I'm just looking at right now. One more plugin I love from waves, just audio effects stuff is CLA guitars. I yes. love to put that on like everything. Yes. Like I literally will put it on like anything. So, um, but yeah, that's kind of like some of my go-to stuff for, um, you know, yeah, for just like, you know. Just like VST stuff. Um, for for example, this is kind of like a splice example. Let's see if this works. Um, I'm working on this song with Kyle actually, Kyle Smith. Um, and this is like a, let me see if this comes through. So that's like a sound that's like super sick to me, very inspiring. Mm. Here it comes again. Like that is so sick. And then like this has a little alter boy on it. And then like mm. a little bit of like a high cut. So this is a regular sample, which is still super, super sick. Yeah. If you throw that little altar boy on it, add a little format shifting, yeah. and then just darken it up a little bit. Like that to me is just like really, really inspiring. Yes. So those are like the kind of things like starting to like do some work with some samples and then also just kind of experimenting with like different vocal effects or different EQs, darkening things up. You know, I think that can really make stuff sound. Really cool, so. Love it. Yeah. Well, thanks, Zach. Thanks for showing us around. Absolutely. It's a pleasure. Really appreciate it. I'll have all his stuff linked down below so you can uh, follow along. Sorry. And uh, thanks again for taking us through. Mm -hmm.